I'll call this meeting to order for May the 21st, 2019. <clears throat> Is all that the agenda for the uh, May 21st regular meeting of council be approved? Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. Is all that the minutes? There's no date in that. This this uh, this last meeting. Seven. Result that the minutes of the May seventh council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> okay. First, our dele uh, reception of delegations. We have with us today. James Wigley from CMHA. So uh, welcome, uh, James, and uh, we look forward to seeing your report. Perfect, thank you. So first off, I just want to say thank you for letting me uh, do a presentation on our uh, office and organization as well as our housing complexes. And an apology that I stood you up on your last meeting there when I was supposed to be on the agenda. I uh, went home and quite honestly, I saw on my agenda that I was supposed to present in the morning and then the day went away. And Totally forgot, so I apologize about that. But you're here you're forgiven that you're here now. Yeah, so. there you go. So I just wanted to, I, I've been sitting around a few tables uh, in regards to CMHA, and uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm the Executive Director CEO for CMHA Swan Valley Branch, so we cover Carfland region and we also have the community of the ponds surrounding area. So uh, with my role on that, um, I've been sitting around a few tables about uh, homelessness and some of the issues that we face around homelessness and, and substance use and some of that stuff within our community. And, and uh, Dwayne Councillor White would also sits around those tables and, and had asked that I come and present to you guys as a council in regards to what we as CMHA are doing to kind of address some of those, those factors within the community and, and our areas that we serve. <clears throat> so just a little bit on who we are. So we are a non-profit uh, mental health support agency as well as a registered charity. So we're not a government organization unless people think we are. Um, we are part of a provincial and national uh, organization which is Canadian Mental Health Association and uh, in 2018 celebrated the 100th year um, of the CMHA organization across the country. We are the, the longest standing uh, mental health support agency in Canada. As I said, we do cover the Parkland region and the community as well as surrounding area of the PAW. Uh, currently, we have nine staff total. Uh, we have programmed housing, so we have four ECHO housing complexes. ECHO stands for Emergency Community Health uh, Housing Opportunities, totaling 69 suites, uh, combined being uh, low income long term transitional and emergency, and I'll explain a little bit of that uh, further on, as well as some of our self-help or peer support programming that we run out of three separate locations in Dock and Swan River and Nepal, covering, again, the whole park market region through that. So ECHO 2 um, is the second ECHO housing project. By the way, I'm only gonna speak to the ones here in Swan River, so we have two ECHO housing complexes in Swan River and two in, in Dauphin currently. Uh, they're built basically identical, so the ones sitting in Swan River are basically identical to the one in, ones in Dauphin. We are a little bit bigger here in Swan. So it is the second uh, echo housing uh, project for CMHA Swan Valley Branch. It was built in 2009. Uh, it was first occupied in November of 2009. It consists of 22 suites, so 20 low-income long-term rental and two emergency. So low income, long term rental, we keep our rates within um, the EIA rates so that an individual doesn't have to um, have any extra come out of their personal budget to live with us. Uh, we know that the people that we serve and that rent from us are usually attached to a service such as EIA or, or other. Um, so we want to ensure that they're not having to spend everything that they get on rent and no money for food or anything else. Um, Emergency are primarily for emergency cases or emergency situations. Typically, we like to have people in and out within about five days. So, but we, with the housing shortage, and I'm sure all of you are aware, and if you're not, then I'll speak to that because there definitely is a housing shortage here in the Valley. Um, we've had people stay in our emergency suites up to nine months because there's nowhere for them to actually go. 
and once they live with us, if they fit within the guidelines and the rules and they're not evicted, then we're not going to make them homeless. So um, that's just the reality. Uh, within those 20 low income, uh, we have one two bedroom, 11 one bedroom, and eight studio. Uh, we also have a support to housing program as well as a housing stability worker that focuses on life skills programming and uh, Red Smart programming. So the intentions of that position is to work with all our tenants to ensure that they can build some skill set and hopefully be able to be better tenants as well as transition further into community at a later date with some better skill set so that they can be successful renting from community landlords. So just some pictures. This is the picture. This is uh, the outside. So like I said, it is our first building here in Swan River. It's also our largest. <coughs> So it's a little bit hard to see. Um, I don't know if you can turn off some lights or anything, but um, you can see my cursor here, maybe. <coughs> no, not really. There it is. So this is our common room. So in each of our buildings, we have a common room. Um, basically, that's where we host our programming and that sort of thing out of. Um, and then we also, these three pictures here are of a common room and then that's of our laundry facility. So we do provide laundry for our tenants as well. This is an emergency suite in Echo 2. So they're quite small. They're a true emergency suite, bare bones. It's a single bed. Um, there is a bath, a bathroom with a stand, shower, toilet, sink. We provide um, towels, linens, that sort of thing for the individual. And then there is a microwave and a bar fridge, TV, but other than that, that's it. So it is pretty bare bones. Like I said, the intention behind these emergency suites are for your emergent situations where they need a day or two or up to five primarily uh, <coughs> um, to stay while they transition to the next, the next opportunity that they have. This is a one bedroom suite. So um, one bedroom suites, they're um, equipped with full kitchens, so microwave, stove, fridge, um, bathroom again, tub, shower combination, toilet, sink, and then a bedroom, um, kind of you can see a little bit of a pinch of there, of uh, the one bed. The studios are very similar, except to just cut off the bedroom. So about the same size as far as living quarters, except minus the bedroom. So our Echo 4, which is our fourth Echo housing project for CMHA Swan Valley Branch, it was built in 2017. First occupancy was in 2018. It consists of 14 suites, 12 transitional, and two emergencies. So the idea behind transitional suites are uh, for those who are coming to us with very little rental skills or life skills. So they get attached to the support to housing program and the housing stability worker right away and they are contracted to work with that person um, at least once a month and depending on where they're at they may be more um, and uh, they have up to three years to live in that building before they transition into other community housing um, that's a stipulation that one of our pro uh, project funders partner funders uh, put on there which was branded neighborhood renewal corporation um, so they were one of our major funders in building this, this complex and uh, transitional for them was up to three years. So that's what we put on there. With saying that, again, we're in a, a kind of a housing crisis here and there's really very little to transition an individual into at this point. So um, we're not bad with this unit of uh, this complex being new, but in Dauphin, uh, Echo 3, which is also transitional, is coming up to the next three year and we do have a few tenants without anywhere to go. So. Um, we have been told uh, by our, our funder there, our major funder partner, um, that we can keep them past the three years as long as they can show that they're actively seeking other housing, but which is fine. Uh, we're not going to make somebody homeless. However, there's lots of people knocking on the door looking for those suites too, that if we can transition them out, then we can move others in and start working with them as well. So it does kind of put a bit of a hiccup in that whole process. Um, this building is all studio suites, so there are no one or two bedrooms. Um, and again, like I said, uh, in order to live in Echo 4, you do need to connect with the Support to Housing Program and uh, the Housing Stability Worker to work on the life skills and rental skills. 
So some pictures of that. So this is the outside of it. It's a two-story building. Uh, I took some pictures to uh, Echo 4. The housing staff received a grant to build some raised garden beds. So they did that last fall, and they're just looking at putting dirt in them here right now. Um, as one of the projects that they're looking at doing is, uh, is gardening and some of that stuff to work with the tenants on that uh, renewable uh, resource with food as well as the therapeutic side of gardening and some of that, those aspects as well. So this is the common area. So you'll see that there's um, the massage chair in this. So our housing staff applied to the foundation for a massage chair as they were creating a therapeutic room within this building. Uh, primarily for tenants is what we had um, anticipated, but it's actually being booked more by community. So that's nice to see. Um, community is using it quite a bit. Um, so it's been quite a hit since we put that chair in. They have a sad lamp or light therapy lamp um, in there, as well as some other things to just create a calming space and, and that sort of thing. And this is an emergency suite. So quite quite a bit more luxurious than our emergency suites in Echo 2. It's the same size as any suite throughout the building. It has a full kitchen, full bathroom. Um, we have a little bit more furniture, so we do have bunk beds in there, so it's more um, held for our, our families that might need an emergency place to stay. Um, and then an actual uh, table and chairs and that sort of thing. Again, comes with all your linens and towels and stuff, so we know that. If it's a true emergency situation at times, so there's people are going to come to us with virtually nothing. So, so those are kind of our housing complexes. Um, I'm going to share with you guys the stats that we keep in regards to our housing after I go through a little bit of our self-help and public relations piece. Um, so, if, if you have any questions at this point, please feel free or just raise your hand at any time, and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. So, Councilor White? Vandalism would be bad. They've got no place to go. So I'm assuming you can't kick them out. So what are the consequences? Uh, in, what, in what regards? Well, so they vandalize our suite. Vandalize we, the suite. So if we have a tenant that vandalizes the suite, um, there, there's a good chance they're looking at an eviction. Uh, depending, I guess it depends on what, uh, I mean, there's lots of factors that go into why an individual does what they do, right? So, I mean, we, look, we try to look at the full picture in regards to something like that. Um, in the transitional housing, it is a, a dry building. So, um, the people who live there are supposed to be, you know, either through um, recovery or their uh, mental health journey or what have you aren't supposed to be using substance while living in that building. Um, as far as the uh, tra uh, Echo 2, other than the emergency suites, I mean obviously it's a person's human right to be able to have alcohol in their house or something like that. So I mean if they, we can put stipulations on it just like any other apartment complex and say we don't allow partying or we have um, we have uh, quiet hours between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. And I mean, if somebody throws a rowdy party and the suite gets smashed, and I mean, there's lots of lots of forms of consequence. I guess is what I want to say. They, um, it doesn't necessarily mean always an eviction. Unfortunately, because of the clientele that we are dealing with, the money isn't really there to repair the suite. So lots of times it is an eviction. Um, with that being said, we always try to. Uh, do a warning letter and conversation with an individual before evicting and try and attach them to our housing stability worker, try and work with that individual to make sure that type of action doesn't happen again. And then, I mean, if it does, then an eviction is pretty permanent to that point. Um, nobody wants to do an eviction. I know my housing staff don't like doing it. I don't like doing it. I've had to do I've had a few since I've taken this position. I've only been in about eight months now. Because again, where there's not many places to go, right? But uh, at the same time, um, you know, we also have to look at it from an organizational standpoint, and we can't be losing thousands of dollars. Otherwise, we're not going to have any of it. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, uh, in regards to self-help public relations, so we have a drop-in and resource uh, support center here on Main Street. So that is our regional head office. 
Um, so we offer anger management, living life to the full, wrap, um, program, grief support, and we're also going to be implementing a learning center recovery college starting in September. So I'll just, uh, my self-help worker couldn't be here tonight, but he did provide me with a little bit of um, a write-up on some of this, so I'll just go through it quick with you guys. Uh, so CMHA Swan Valley Branch employs self-help and peer support staff that can offer support to anyone in need of mental health assistance or is not sure where to go for support. So a large part of that position is connecting through other community agencies. Our office has a wealth of literature, books, and other material that provides information for mental health education. Uh, while not able to provide professional counseling services, and the reason for that is um, my self-help worker is not a, um, does not have post-secondary or belong to a certain college to be able to be classified as a counselor. Um, Self-help or peer support staff can meet with individuals on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis to offer general support and a listening ear, so lots of resource distribution. Staff can also assist individuals in formulating a personal recovery plan toward mental health and well-being and can assist in getting individuals connected with other support services in the community. Most of the time when my uh, peer support staff work with an individual through a personal recovery plan, it's in conjunction with community mental health attached to the hospital. Uh, anger management, so that's an eight session course using the anger solutions curriculum, covers topics such as taking responsibility for feelings, communication styles, how anger develops, passive, assertive, and aggressive behaviors, body language, listening skills, forgiveness, and releasing residual anger. So uh, that program can be offered in a group setting or on a one-to-one -one basis, and the cost is $25 for the course booklet. Um, we get a lot of referrals uh, in regards to that program from uh, <coughs> foundations of the court system as well as mental health. So that's primarily where we get a lot of our referrals. Uh, Living Life to the Full is an eight-session course based on CBT. CBT is Cognitive Behavior Therapy. Uh, principles designed to help people learn how to reduce stress, be happier, and more confident. So living life to the full helps people make a difference in their lives, providing practical tools to overcome life's problems. Each session is moderated by a trained facilitator and includes a booklet, handouts, exercises, and discussions. The course fee is $50 for each participant, and again, that covers the cost of a course manual. With that being said, for both the anger management and the living life to the full, it's our mandate here in Swan Valley at CMHA that we never want to deter someone who could truly benefit from the programming. So if at any time there's somebody that can benefit from that programming and is not able to pay the full amount, then our staff will work with that individual to come up with an agreement in regards to how much they can pay. Um, it's never offered for free usually as we want that accountability piece to actually come to the program and participate, but we, we are known to work with, with individuals. Uh, RAP, which stands for the Wellness Recovery Action Plan, uh, is self-designed, individual-driven prevention and wellness program that anyone can use to get well, stay well, and make their life the way that they want it to be. It is based on the key principles of hope, personal responsibility, education, self-advocacy, and support. It's a six-session course and is offered at no cost to groups, uh, a minimum of six participants, and that program is actually in partnership with uh, Prairie Mountain Health, so we offer that with their psychosocial rehabilitation program. Uh, grief support, so uh, we are going to start offering grief support on a one-to-one -one and group basis. Uh, Mid-June, my staff is going to a training in Winnipeg to be able to do that, uh, June 3rd and 4th. And our learning centers, so we are currently in the process of developing and implementing a recovery college-based learning center in Swan River, Dauphin, and the Paw. Uh, the learning center will be open to the community in general and will touch on different subjects related to personal recovery and well-being. Uh, topics like building healthy uh, self-esteem, uh, building blocks for managing stress, care for the caregiver, sleep hygiene. There's courses on how to journal effectively, as we know journaling can help um, people in regards to uh, their recovery plan. Um, introduction to depression on and anxiety, so what is it? Understanding psychosis, uh, personal well-being one-on-one, that sort of thing. Excuse me. So courses will run anywhere from one to six sessions, depending on the course material and the curriculum. Most sessions will be about one and a half to two hours in length. Our current idea is to offer these courses through our head office, as well as the Echo Housing Complexes in Swan River and uh, Dauphin, and our sub-self-help office in Nepal. So um, 
The other two learning centers that CMHA has in the province right now is in Winnipeg and in Portage, so we would be the third in uh, Manitoba um, to impl implement a uh, learning center recovery college. And um, it's got quite a bit of uh, traction and interest from Manitoba Health and that sort of thing in regards to the peer support piece of it, and Manitoba Health is one of our funders, so we've been in discussion with them on how to make that happen. So uh, my support staff are in uh, contact and, and conversations with Portage and Winnipeg to do curriculum sharing, and uh, we're planning to implement and, and be ready to roll with it from September, so we're excited about that for sure. Are there any questions in regards to some of that? I know it's a lot of information, very quick. <clears throat> any questions? Okay. So I just want to go through some of the statistics. So before I came on, um, about seven years ago, CMHA had a program called HIFIS, and it kept stats for the housing, and unfortunately, um, it, it didn't really do a great job. It was a program that was purchased to do to kind of keep all the stats for the staff. They just had to implement, input some stuff, and it was supposed to do it all for them. It didn't really work like it was supposed to, and it actually ended up crashing the server. So um, when I came on board, I noticed there really wasn't a whole lot as far as supports our uh, stats being kept for our housing and in order for us to go after more funding and, and community partnership to hopefully be able to address the housing issue that we have and, and uh, potentially build more, we need some stats to back up why we need it. So I took some of this from the actual HIPAA's model as I felt the idea, the the actual stats it was supposed to keep were, were pretty bang on. So you'll see here, oh, it's very hard to see. I want to see if I can be a little bit bigger for you. So you'll see here we have a file number. So that's the year, month, and day, and then the number. So the idea behind this is once they get into one of our buildings, the day that is their move-in date becomes their date, and then their number is just whatever is in succession. And uh, if there's an E added to it, that means that they move it into an emergency suite. Because I wanted to track the use of our emergency suite separate from our transition on long term. Um, the idea behind that is that we try to keep it as anonymous as possible when we're sharing these stats and presenting. Obviously, we have measures built so that we can pull up a person's name attached to any number at any time, but for this purpose. Um, we have their age of the person who's living there, their gender, the ethnicity, now I know Dwayne asked me this question the last time I presented this to him, what is the other? Basically, when it comes to ethnicity with these stats, we are going off of the same as what the Friendship Center keeps, what AFM keeps, all those places, and the, the ones that we, the four main ones that we keep track of is First Nations, non-status, Métis, and other, other being um, Caucasian or another ethnicity. With that being said, I have directed um, my staff that if there is another um, ethnicity that we see come in to here, uh, other than Caucasian, then I want to actually grab that stat so we can kind of take a look at that as well. So when you see other, it's, it's, it's basically Caucasian. Uh, the total admission, so how many people are living in the suite or needing to live in the suite, what their rent source is, so if you see RECAP, that's a Manitoba housing supplement that uh, they provide us with, so they supplement a portion of that individual's rent. Their risk of uh, homelessness, so it goes from they're currently homeless, which means they have nowhere to go, uh, to imminent risk, uh, being that they're going to be homeless in the next little bit if they don't find housing, no risk, or they're supportively housed, but for whatever reason are looking to get out to another place. Uh, reason for service, so uh, why are they actually applying to live with us? Referred from, uh, we don't have anything filled in here, and the reason for that is uh, as we, we've just changed our application applications themselves, and I didn't realize that the former application didn't actually have the reason question on it, so we've changed that, <coughs> and as we move it forward, we'll actually have that information coming in. Track their move-in date, when they move out, what their move-out date is, what is their reason for moving out, and how many nights they stay with us. And then in the, over here we track um, 
are they attached to the support the housing program? Other than the transitional buildings, it's completely voluntary on the individual if they want to connect with that program or not. We obviously, um, you know, state when they do move in that we feel it would be beneficial for them to connect, but again, it's not, it's not deemed mandatory unless you're in the transitional housing. So Echo 1, that is Dauphin. So this is Swan River here. This is our Echo 2, so our first. And this is from, oops, from January of 2019. <clears throat> so we've had a total of 27 um, different people come into this. Emergency suites again, like I said, I don't know how much you guys want me to go into depth here. I've kind of explained it, but uh, and I'm more than happy to share this with anybody if you would like me to. Like I said, we put measures in here so that uh, it is anonymous and you can kind of just see. The majority of what we see is, is homelessness. Um, we have a wait list of probably about nine to 12 people at any given day to get into our housing complexes. Uh, and generally speaking, when we do have a suite open up and we um, take it to our housing committee and we make a selection and we contact that person, I would say probably eight out of 10 have not found other housing when we contact. So again, I feel that that speaks to the, the issues that we, we face here um, in the Valley and Parkland, really, our uh, country um, on a daily basis. Any questions? <clears throat> any questions? Go ahead, Councilor Is there any thought for another <clears throat> echo development um, that works? Well, um, I will start by saying everybody answers to somebody. So I mean, I've got what I would like to see. I do answer to my board. So I, I obviously have to always go by what they would like to do as a board. Um, as far as an echo, probably not because. Um, I think we need to look at a tiered approach to housing. Um, in regards to uh, Dwayne's question before, um, with the eviction, we do see a lot of eviction because the population that are looking for housing have burnt a lot of bridges in the community and are high risk, vulnerable persons. And an echo can be pretty brittle at times um, in regards to damage. So I think if we're in a go forward with another building project, we need to build a tier one housing complex. Echo would be more like a tier two. So you move into Echo once you have some housing uh, supports already and some life skills and rental skills and that sort of thing. But your tier one is, is kind of more your indestructible housing unit that is truly meeting the person at where they're at and attaching more services through say harm reduction, mental health, public health, AFM, our support to housing, that sort of thing with those individuals to get them to a point that they can transition into an echo. Um, as far as building that complex, there's lots of interest around our table right now. Um, as we talk to that more, I'm sure I'll come and speak to you guys about how we might build partners as far as the Swan River community and our organization, just like we did with the echoes. Um, but we're still in the, in the investigation phase with that because with that comes a lot more risk and logistics too, right? Because just the people we're going to be housing. So. Yeah, but there is interest because um, we know, uh, with speaking to the RCMP, uh, this winter we had probably about 100 individuals homeless in our community through the winter. Um, so, I mean, a lot of them can find a friend's place to crash at. You know, that means eight people in a one bedroom or bachelor suite, that that's what that means. We know that there's lots of risk and other issues that come with that. So we can kind of build some more suites that's safer for them than that, that also have services I think we're gonna be doing the community and the individuals themselves a good a good um, program and, and jobs. So. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Good, well thank you again for letting me come and present. Um, if you do have any questions after the fact, um, I can send my uh, contact information um, to yourself, I guess, yeah. Yeah. And uh, can pass it onwards.
Um, and yeah, I'm always available for conversations. Thank you and your team for looking out for people who need a lot of help. Yeah, you sometimes we forget about them, they're good, they're not invisible, and they need help like we all do, and you guys have a tough job. I appreciate that what you do. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much, James. I appreciate that. Okay, moving on to 4.2. Application number one, 2019. Purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variation application to allow the construction of a deck in the front yard extending 3.3 inches, or sorry, 3 feet 3 inches past the front of the house to vary the front yard setback distance from 13 feet to 10 feet. Current zoning by the state's minimum 30 feet setback uh, house prior. Uh, or sorry, house built prior to this requirement. The requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and their civic address. Oh, would you like to speak, Linda? It's not necessary. Okay, I'm supposed to discuss this? If, if you want. If you want to speak uh, for it, or against it, you can uh, speak for it. Okay, well, I'm going to then. Well, what about you? You can come to the table here. <clears throat> That's fine. Okay. Yeah, first time for everything. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm replacing existing steps that are unstructurally sound. So then I thought, well, this is an opportunity to upgrade to deck. And the size of the deck, and then we will move into small to the deck.
How do you want to come forward in our day? How do you go sideways and back? My driveway is on the side, and my neighbor's on the other side. So I can't go up to the side of the You still need to drive, right? Oh, I have Oh, you You got a house that shows if you've got a side yard. You build it back into that corner. Why do you do that? Yeah. Because you're already you're already 17 feet inside the. That's my driveway. It's on driveway and out. Could you move that one? Like I missing something? I, I don't know. I'm gonna get it. I, I have the house. The neighbor's room really close to one side, and then a the front door, and then a, a lean to door that doesn't function, and it's too low to pretty different. And the driver goes right up to it. And then I have a driver that goes around the trees that are right next to the driver. Close The deck would be 10 feet when you come to the trees in front of the edge of the property. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, from the front? Yeah, from the street. No, not from the street. 27 feet from the street, 10 feet. To the property line is 10 feet, and the property line to the curb is another 14 feet, so that would be 24 feet from the curb. Yeah, 27 feet, I guess, two feet from the deck. Coast are white. So, do you have any concerns about that, uh, Mr. Pool? About this request? No, no, I don't. With the with with where the house is built in these old subdivisions. Uh, and if you go out, if you go and take a look, it's, it is well treated. It's not, it's, these houses in this area are, are kind of on a, on a slant. So it's not yeah. like it's, it's not like it's a consistent it's setback from the curve for every house along that street. I don't think this will be a big issue in my opinion. Okay. Okay, resolve the variation order application one 2019 be approved, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. It's passed. Thank you. I'm just saying a nice place. Okay, so moving on to uh, 6.1, uh, we see the information there from the RCP. The March invoice from uh, sorry from January to March invoice and from January. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Linda. Bye. I know that some of you have been wondering about that. I repeat it that. Questions to ask Eric about that, with all this communication. I think uh, you were supposed to have a health memorial as much as a good idea. I believe mean, it was that part of Campbell. I thought that was I found that very difficult to interpret. Well, we have a better This is the report. Is there any things that they were supposed to send you back your reports? So that's not the case, that's something to really hear. But um, my concern is something big. Um, have, you, have you looked at the, the projections? That pulls it up, obviously. There's, there's significant raises. We're, we're going to get back each year for the next five years, personally. But more importantly, our budget is already out $100,000. We just did pass the meeting where we were suggesting we could do it with this potential. And with a hundred thousand dollar shortfall, if, if all they do is bill us two hundred and eighty-one thousand one hundred seventeen a quarter, okay, which is what they're billing with. For four quarters, that would be one point one four 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 six eight. One point one four million dollars. But our actually budgeted for $100,000 less than that. 
So we were already 100,000 dollars behind on policing. And I never caught the two until I went to the car we were going to the budget before. And, and then when I looked at this again, I, I, I said, there's something wrong with these numbers. But I wasn't worried about the next year's until I looked at the inputs, which I found I, I found sort of very in the middle at 181,117, which sort of really jumped out at me. And so it was only then that I did the math. So I'm particularly concerned. With that number. Yeah, because I mean, you have been given the number of what we're looking at for this year, and I, I can't see it changing much next year unless something dramatic, drastically happening here or we're missing something. And that's why I was asking is like what that invoice was. It was like, we normally budget $1.1 1. 1 and a quarter million dollars for our CP policing. And that depends if there's been an increase in March that wasn't in January. Then our best case scenario is $100,000. Our more likely scenario is if the expenses are increasing, and there are numbers going to be higher. And if you look at these two other things, explained a little bit better in detail and, and if it indeed says that our policing costs are going to see a huge increase in the next three or four years because well, if they are <laughs> well there's a secret expense that goes from Thank 
cost of 207000 to this administration. Okay. Just tell me what's that. It is on page 505 at the top. What would I ask uh, Sergeant Cameron to come from the Reservation Force of the Council? I think that Derek could probably talk to him. Well, you better let us know. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, there's, there's a, a, a total of paid for over $13 million. So maybe we, if we can get some clarity on this? I just don't know what it means. Yeah. But I, but I do know this that, that the invoice amount is multiplied by four. Okay, we can answer with the 2019 budget and then uh, projections in the coming years. Okay. 6.2 Association of Community Living, that's an invitation to their AGM, which will be on June the 11th, so I'm sure that one of us can attend. I'll try, but if I can't, then I'll ask you guys to look. <coughs> 7.1 Superintendent of Works Report. Questions or comments to Mr. Poole? Councilor Moyer. Um, under engineering, we've got contact with public health inspector and bike statistics for provincial disinterment order information for information on disinterment. What is that? <laughs> the, the province tracks the big upgrade. There's been a request to. Uh, we need provincial approval. Council, like just a query uh, relative to the UK that comes off the lagoons uh, this time of year, we have these winds. Have we done anything proactively to, to reduce that? Like we talk about aeration at one time, I'm not sure where that comes. So that's two questions. To, to spend the money just on aeration? Would be a, it wouldn't be very efficient if we know we're going into a lagoon upgrade in the coming years. So we would purposely postpone adding aeration uh, to wait for the big upgrade. Do you have the cost of aeration on? No, it's not a gas. million dollars. I'm sure it's a thousand. Right, just get that. They've got some new high tech aeration units out there. These have small lakes, which are at least four times bigger than our food, to aerate the keep fish. And it's a thousand dollars, of course, it's not from fecal matter. And they're, they're becoming more and more less expensive to buy and more and more efficient from a hydroelectric perspective. And the kind of sorts of stuff the other they really, really, I want to check with the guy and see if we get the commercial quote to us. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to bring in the, the cost of taking hydro there, building the housing builders, MCCs, yeah. everything, piping. Yeah. Questions? What? Do, do, how many summer staff for the cemetery? Two. Have they started? They just started more than this. Just. They'll just be there in the mornings, is that what you're saying? No, they just started mowing. Oh, okay. No, we, we actually just lost that, but we were fixing it. So we're good with getting flowers for them in the morning? Yeah. Thanks. That's all I'm telling you. I got nothing. Okay, shame on me. I think I forgot to read the resolution, so I'll read it now. Resolved the superintendent works for appropriate receipt, moved by Councillor Mentoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so moving on to Councillor and CAO reports. We'll start with Councillor Friesen. Um, I would just, I mean, ask you to thank Jordan Brooks. Um, we had a couple of the uh, big flower pots that were down by the water cooler plant. There was three there, and I mentioned to him that I'd like two of them moved up to our hall, and with bang, they were done. And we didn't have to make a date for So thank you, Jordan. 
Um, I received an email the other day from Healthy Secretariat. They're offering a uh, $25,000 grant for something that we might want to do. I'm thinking of age friendly middle of the how long the services the seniors may tap into that and get it to power doors or something. That's just my dream. Uh, you're all invited May 31st to the Urban Forest Arbor Day, uh, 10 a.m. Meet down at the Arboretum. Um, it's a good cause. Uh, I see we have Canada Day on our budget. You agree with that amount, or do you want me to come out of it? As of right now, we're numbers and changing. Okay. And summer staff, I just asked you. Thursday, we have a budget meeting here at six. Correct. That's all I have, so okay. Councillor Moya. Um, this period on May 10th, uh, the Councillor uh, White, Mayor Jacobson, joined me uh, <coughs> on a trip to Dolphin where we met the K 12 Commission, um, where we uh, presented um, our feelings and views on school boards and why it's important. With our key message was that. Uh, our citizens of the Valley want excellent education, education both because it was uh, every child's right and that it would fuel the local economy. And so that was the main theme uh, that we had there. Um, and we brought it home with uh, highlighting our partnerships and our, the governance model that we currently have and any other governance model that would be um, negatively uh, seen and Effects. Um, it was a very good meeting. Uh, we didn't do any harm. They uh, were very well um, retrieved on our presentation that we gave them. Um, they commented on how passionate we were advocating for the valley and very commended in, uh, in how passionate we were and how our partnerships were with the rest of the municipal partners and the school division, uh, which from what I understand what the members were saying is that they haven't seen that anywhere else in their terms of the partnerships that we achieved um, had to this foundation to the value itself achieve that. Um, so we'll we can see what their recommendations are come back out of that. Um, May 14th, um, meeting, uh, sort of White and Mayor Jacobson, we attended uh, a meeting with uh, Francis Chartrand and the BT organization regarding some partnerships that we can look forward to um, and establish better relationships with uh, the Indigenous people and that. And that was followed up with uh, again another uh, meeting with. The Chief Batson and Chief Janai on May 16th. Uh, the same topic is how we can strengthen our relationships with the Indigenous people uh, in the valley and how we can work together for the other community that can support the project. I want to bring forward, if you want to book next Tuesday, the Federal Services Committee needs to meet with Council to discuss the fire bylaw and the policies. Um, so we can get that back on the rails. So we have that sort of that announced plan for Tuesday. We can schedule for that on or off Tuesday. We took a look at that. So if you want to start at 7 in a few days. And it will be brought up later, but I'm proposing to bring a resolution forward. Um, for the June district meeting so that it uh, potentially hopefully passes there and goes to the MM um, regarding the public safety communication system, um, requesting that the AMM um, lobby the provincial government for funding assistance for the replacement of the uh, dual fleet net uh, public safety communication system with the 
just kind of I see the agenda, it's, it's theirs. It's all. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Tony. Councilor? Okay, had a question, man. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, just finishing or continuing and finishing the process of budget. Um, interesting process, and unfortunately, there will be tax increases. Uh, thank you to your worship and councillors uh, Mario and White for attending the um, school board commission meeting in Dauphin. Thank you for representing representing our council. I had the opportunity to um, bring greetings to the Elks Club um, for one of their uh, meetings that they had. Um, it's, it's it's interesting to see some. I don't, know, I don't want to say older clubs, but uh, clubs that I'm not familiar with in some of their processes. So that was interesting to see some of their traditions and, and things that they do. So that was very exciting. I also had the opportunity to attend my first uh, meeting at another council. It was a delegation on behalf of RISE um, to the RM of Swan Valley West, which was interesting in all in all itself. So um, hopefully it brought home the concept of uh, economic development and tourism to to that board. Um, just want to say some congrats to Dwayne. I saw his picture and posted in two newspapers, the Dauphin paper and Swan River, in regards to getting a, an award and a fish enhancement dinner held in Dauphin. So congratulations to you. Other than that, that's all the information I have to share today at this time. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Well, I was out of town for work all last week, so nothing to report. Okay. Also, why? Uh, the, the, the trip to Dauphin to the Cato Club Commission I found very interesting. I, I can't give enough kudos uh, to David for organizing the speaking pattern. He didn't say a lot of things. He said a lot of talk about it collaboratively. It was seamless because of the, the energy that we spent and handed us our notes, and the notes for them. We had pictures from the the uh, seven, eight representatives from different parts of Manitoba. So I'd be at least very pleased with what the Swan Valley Council had to say as well. Good one. Then on the 14th, I uh, met with Francis Sharkin, as you said, uh, such tremendous potential economic development that I look forward to working collaboratively with the MF. On the 14th, we met somewhere to talk about the Lucio potential to be, so we stay, uh, I stay optimistic there. On the 15th, uh, I had a safe house meeting and with those uh, ladies and men, and uh, I, I cannot give them enough accolades for the perseverance. I've been going on eight, nine years now. Other than the town of Swan River donating some land to them, they haven't had a lot of tangible results, but the same as Mr. You know, again, Mr. Wiggins who spoke, they want to help people who don't have what we don't have. But I cannot not help that team. Then on the 16th, uh, Chief Bassett and Chief Janai, and I uh, want to uh, compliment uh, the mayor for his excellent report, rapport with those people, and, uh, and a sign that I liked uh, the mayor on behalf of us, and we all agreed with invited them to attend a G5 meeting with the possibility of becoming members. And I think both chiefs were thinking very positively about coming and see what it's all about. We're, we can just expand the, you know, the family and make people work better. So I really enjoyed that part. Have you heard back? Are they coming? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the budget meeting today went well. Uh, a comment, I'm thinking that there's some time for presentations. Do we allow them five minutes, ten minutes? Do our guests know that ahead of time? They do, and they, you know, they are required to give our information before it. Okay. As long as they are. Uh, thank you for your comments regarding the award uh, that Swan Valley's court fish got at the Dauphin dinner. That wasn't to Dwayne, that was to our fish group. And I was lucky enough to be there and very fortunate enough. It's called the Gary Memorial Award. And Gary was a personal friend of mine, interestingly. And 20 years ago, when they started the Dauphin group, I was part of that team as, as our Swan Valley people were. So that award went to Swan Valley's court fish for the work that we do with the Dauphin committee. Where we collectively try to help. I'd like to say this for you. Thank you for the comments to Swan Valley Sports Fish. Thank you. Is that everything? Councilor White, is that everything? That's it, thank you. Okay. 
Councilor Gray. These have already been very well. I was involved in this. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mention that I went to the library meeting of the Thank you for coming. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I yes. just wanted to tell you when the next one is. <laughs> June 17th, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Okay? Do you? Okay. That's it. All right. Mm -hmm. For me, kind of just a, a reissue <laughs> of the stuff that just was mentioned earlier, but um, with the K 12 Commission, I think. You know, Councillor Morio, Councillor White for working together on, on setting that meeting up, like I said earlier. But we also sat and we discussed it, you know, a couple of nights before. So I think that we had a, a good message and we did a good job, similar to what we did at the AMM last year. And I think that was recognized by the group. Um, yes, they actually made a comment, a comment that we should be uh, contract speakers for some, you know, for the municipality. So that's quite a compliment. Um, I think, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we uh, last week we it was mentioned already that we had a couple of meetings with our indigenous leaders, in particular the manager of the federation, media federation, uh, the vice president of our area, Francis Chartrand, and she brought with her Herman Spence and Kayla Zelinsky, Zelinsky, I would say it, Zelinsky. And uh, it was interesting, like she said, that our region is actually from Alonzo all, all, all the way to Birch River, so it's a fairly large area, and they're working so hard on so many different projects. It was, it was uh, hard to keep track of everything that she was, was talking about, but definitely they have a huge vested interest in, in, in their people in, in this area, and, and not only for them, but for us as well. And, uh, and our goal, anyways, is to work together, and we will be working. Uh, together with them, I hope, anyways, and that should be our goal. And uh, in the next, hopefully in the next week, we can sit down and have a, a, a discussion or a planning meeting about some of the things that we did talk about that uh, I think it's important to, uh, to come back to her and, and to continue talking. With the Chiefs, there's lots of talk there. Unfortunately, Chief Zastry couldn't attend. They had an emergency meeting of their own, but uh, he promised me that we'll get together either with us one-on-one -on -one or Next time we have a chance to meet with Chief Batson and Chief Janai. But both of them were really engaged in our discussion. Chief Batson actually, I think she said she was born here and she had lots of connection to the valley as well. But uh, she definitely uh, sees uh, some huge uh, opportunities for, for her and, and her people here. And they talk a lot about you know the health background and our health moving forward. And she has a lot of uh, history with. Uh, health herself, so um, I think that we, we have some good points that we start talking, and there's a few other things that I've talked to uh, Mr. Poole about and the rest of the council as far as what we also discuss there, where we can work together on. And um, with uh, this budget, I guess, that was basically it, so Mr. Poole, you have next. Uh, I attend the board of directors meeting for the Manitoba Water Resource Association last week. Just to touch on an important note that uh, in comparison to our municipal partners, just to give a shout out to our, our uh, utility operators, uh, just how well the job they're doing. As you see on that board, the, the struggles that the municipalities are going through with staffing, just a general problem with keeping trained staff. Experienced staff, so just uh, I guess I don't want to go ahead and take that big guys on our crew. Just so Council Lewis held another office staff meeting today, discuss daily operations and upcoming projects, uh, looking at anything in payroll cutoff, which is a two year program. Just to discuss the increased communication in the office and just the real responsibility and expectations for everybody. That's it. That's it. All right. Thank you. 8.2. Resolved that the Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy 2019 budget be accepted as received. Oh, you're right. Sorry about that. 
resolved that the application to subdivide uh, is that portion? Portion? Southwest one one quarter section 2736-27 West Municipal Relations File number 4455-19-7511 be approved. Moved by Councillor Memorial, seen by Councillor uh, Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Resolved that the Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy 2019 budget be accepted as received. Moved by Councillor Lettoni, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. Uh, how was this received at Swan Valley West? Um, they did they pass a resolution. They did not pass a resolution. Uh, it was uh, well received. Um, <laughs> it was uh, it was an interesting conversation. Lots of questions, lots of dialogue. Um, but as far as resolution, one did not get put on the floor. Everybody's waiting to see what we do. Wow. I'm, uh, I'm not really sure, I can't give you that, but the RM Mountain has passed this budget um, within the first week that they, they received it. The RM of uh, Minnetona and Bozeman will be voting on it. I think today, tonight's their council meeting as well, or the next, I'm not sure what their council date is. I thought it was today for some reason, but I'm not sure. But um, RM of Mountain has passed it. Um, So has, has the rise board in it had any discussions as far as if say only three out of the four or two out of the four if, if they're going to carry on or if they're going to I guess come up with plan B or or just hoping right now that all four are in that I mean if I guess if Mountain's already in but if another one of the larger contributors is not in that's changed this dramatically as far as ability to do what Rise wants to do, right? Yeah, I, I don't think we haven't had that official discussion. Um, the idea is that economic development is is crucial to the ongoing um, momentum and, and vision of the community as a whole. Um, it's just the hopes that every municipality sees the value in, in economic development uh, as far as planning what's to happen if one doesn't participate. I don't think I can't say uh, I know what my opinion would be, but that's just my opinion. It's not the views of the entire board itself. Maybe Councillor Gray can add to that as well. Councillor Gray. Um, the ride board did defer consideration of the improvement Officer, if all four of express it for that reason, uh, one would hope that by G5 we would have a result uh, and that if it's a goal to go, remember that the proposal is essentially for two years that's this year and next year. It's basically a two year proposal so that we have uh, measurables and so on. We've had the benefit of having a half-time uh, employee the limitations for that, but there are also benefits of what the benefits because they are contributing significantly less. Um, these numbers are back to what the original proposals were some years ago. And so, um, and the focus, there's a separate, a separate focus on tourism, it's going to need a separate assessment by a certain level next year as to whether or not that language. There are two streams that the budget will receive. One stream is purely the end of the other is a total um, out. And, and those will both be 
the value of the that board, and that evaluation comes back to all the councils to see if the fact council believe that, that that process is working for them. The problem for the council, that problem benefit, I'm not sure for the town swan is that if, if they don't, practically speaking, the town's decision would be whether to go with some that amount of on its own. But if the alternative would be to have no is a big that actually would be well within the budget. That would certainly be a fact a matter that the Rise Board would have on the table would probably be in place. How would Swan Valley Vets, for example, participate if they weren't truly their share? I guess to speak a little bit more of Rise, maybe I'm not sure what everybody knows or whatever what you don't know. So um just, uh, just to support that. Pardon me? No, I was just going to add to say that some of the things that we should hear about. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, now I lost my train of thought. Um, um, we, uh, we're at a halftime economic development officer. The, the RISE partnership also hired a tourism uh, assistant, I guess. Um, tourism, not really sure what the official title is. For that person, we looked at uh, continuing with economic development and changing the entire structure and coming up with four areas of, of um, areas that need to be focused on and giving a, a very good sense of direction and structure. Um, as in the past, I don't think that that was there. Um, with measurables to, to to ensure that every municipality is seeing what their tax dollars are going for and what they're actually um, reaping in the in the end of it, um, it is very clear that we wouldn't have a quality job with a half-time economic development officer. We wouldn't find a qualified qualified person to do that. We looked at recruiting an individual. We've secured. A headhunting firm to find us that employee with the basis of um, budgets being passed by all the municipalities um, and with a further commitment to participate in economic development the following year to give that person the opportunity to have two years under their belt to, to show what they can do the position being more of a sales position so that that um, the person would achieve a salary and then when the goals are met would further enhance their pace or their pay scale um, looking at the four areas um, the four projects i guess um, rise awareness which is or sorry town folio um, which is one of them um, town folio if you really think of going to you know, see what these buddies have, it's an kind of online website that gives all of that information in a systematic way so that people can see whether or not they need to use it in the volume So, Town Folio was approved by the RISE Board to spend that money on it, and like Councillor Gray said, it compiles all the data. Um, for Swan River as well as every municipality and then the combined data of all of the information that one would be looking for to, to set up a business. I know I think that they've been in contact with you, Mr. Poole, in regards to inputting information into it already. I'm not entirely sure how that process is going currently, um, but there's already been a company who noticed noticed it and who is looking at all the stats and asking for more information in regards to um, putting a, a, an operation here so that's it's already has, has done a little bit we've got uh, visitor attraction uh, cell phone and internet services um, and transportation are the key are the areas that the rise board voted on and decided that they wanted the funds to be working towards those 
having said that, when something comes up, it's not we're not mandated to look at that because we have these. That's not how. That's not the case at all. If somebody comes to us to, to the rise board and and has questions, we'll definitely work with them and continue to attract them to our community and, and force growth within the community as well. Okay. I see in 2018 that we were budgeted to transfer 28000 from the reserve, but we didn't. We had a shortfall of 30000 Why? Why didn't we transfer from the reserve to cover that? Approximately ninety to ninety three thousand dollars. Sorry, Councilor Gorey, your question? On twenty eighteen, we budgeted to transfer from the reserve, but we never did. Councilor Gray. Now that I know that Councilor Gray spent a lot of time working with the budget and with the with Heather before she uh, left her position. No, that was here before. But that that would be attributed to the two municipalities not paying. And that you're also a short budget. I know the transfer is going to be 19,000. Not going to be transfer by yeah. They are actively correct. So if you go to the point, mm -hmm. so you would. This is a short and answer. It's an entry error because there's more than that transfer. The reality is that the shortfall came off of the reserves. Both of them. So I don't know. I, I mean, I never noticed yeah. it because I never really looked at it in terms of what was in terms of the budget. I might look at it more in terms of what the financials actually show. Councilor, you answered most of the um, pretty much all the questions I had. Um, but looking at it again, with the coming up between uh, next resolution for the levies, how I'm looking at that chart, how did you? I find it hard to, to figure out what you're trying to explain in that chart. How did that come about? Well, it'll be on the next resolution. It'll be on the resolution. On the next formula? Yeah. Okay, so what we took was for each municipality, um, we took the total amount that was, so if there's any budget, the total amount that's required to be expended. You figure out, you know, it says 154,000 dollars for the list, but that's probably like two transfers below or above the transfer of the seniors. Okay. The, there's 140,000 dollars of each match. Um, and so what we did was we took the amount divided into two pools. 50% is based on the population of each municipality. So the total, the total population value is that our community is 500 people we have 4,200 of them. They are, as it's probably the same, um, in terms of this part of the glass, and we only have less than that. And then the other group is uh, based on the assessments for each of the municipalities that it's total. The light bulb went off in your so that's where, so your 50% of the assessment is, or 50% of the amount is on per capita, the other 50% is on assessment. Yes. So you needed seventy thousand dollars on per capita, and that's where those percents of population comes right. out. And then say I I connect it up. To well, I think we mentioned it before, but, but it's hard, you know. I, but again, that was we we spent most of our first couple of meetings, the first couple of the second, third meetings, debating formulas for how this should look and what we should expect. That was really the issue. Is is whether we should propose winding up or whether we should propose expanding or whether we should propose 
status quo. Um, when the heavier left, it became obvious we were going to hire somebody. So hiring somebody who's going to be up on the drop was going to be a full time person. And that's the most significant increase. There were some strange expenditures in previous years. So you'll see expenditures, you know, the signage up there is, is incredibly expensive <laughs> and not everyone's happy with it. That's not, they all was extended during the last couple of months of 2018 and, and actually paid for in 2019. That was approved and dealt with in the spring of 2018. Um, so that's how we came up with numbers. And so we don't have specific plans for the um, for the items. The biggest difference is the EDO recruitment, um, uh, which all, almost all of which comes from the service. I see all that stuff is based on the 2016 assessments. Yeah. I think the most crazy we have a bit of a And it's, it's intended to be each year, whatever we have, is based on that. That's how it's important. Importantly, it's going forward. Whatever the population is, whatever we have, that's what we use. Whatever the assessment is, that's what we use. So you guys figured out the formula first before before we started putting the up. Well, we figured out. The first thing we do is figure out what the expenses would be. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we figure out what the formula would be for deciding to pay which resulted in your four levy amounts. That exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we didn't actually, I mean, we knew sort of what the numbers would be, but um, we didn't. We didn't go backwards. Yeah. We didn't go backwards. Exactly. That was the whole point of our watershed extension, because we started with the formula, which there. Okay. And the reasons, I, I can tell you the reason, by the way. Um, municipal development or product, economic development um, helps the assessment because it increases the levies um, for people working in the community. But it's more likely to be so sourced where there are population centers. Therefore, it's necessary to balance population with assessment. It's not just purely an assessment tool. It's, it, the fact is that the respondent requires to be able to so it has this large respondent group. And so Balance out. Okay. Actually, I just have a few questions on that one. Sure. Um, so the the salary that we're talking about that is that's a base salary, then there's an opportunity for that person to earn more. Understand, uh, right? Or is that included with the? Um, no, the forty-two thousand is based on the fact that we don't have anybody replaced it sometime in July. There's going to be an open period of time, um, and so. Um, we may have spent, Heather is a half-time employee, and we work the first, the first of April, basically, and we will have three or four months of a vacant spot there. And so what um, Courtney did was take our salary structure of $60,000, the process is we're going to offer a salary that's significantly less than 40, so this is 40, 45, and there are going to be incentives. That's, That's correct. So the full salary is 60000 including incentives. This one's less because of the time portion of it. That's correct. Of the year. It's th basically 30 and 12. About well, less than 9. Okay. <clears throat> the, the, there's, uh, there's three things there. I don't know if we're talking about the, the, the points that we're looking at. This is your attraction. We have 10 there, which is about 17, or 17 less than last year. And then there's internet cell, interest or investment attraction community profile. So that might be what you've been talking about, town folio that falls into there, and transportation. Well, oh, there, there are actually um, six in that, those are project development. And the reason for the, the visitor attraction, that was the signs, and we got a big chunk of money from a government program and we contributed a smaller portion of it. So those are total expenditures. That's the reason I went down, because it's, we don't expect the size. So what we basically did was say we've got um, $2,225 for business protection, which is sort of training um, projects and so on. Uh, $4,000, which is rise awareness, which was impactful activities, community to enhance community uh, awareness. And then four project areas, visitor attraction, uh, internet and cell service, which is identified as the single greatest weakness. Uh, transportation, and that comes in two forms. We talked a little bit about whether or not we could become more of a regional transportation hub, but also possible at the airport. 
And that, that's a big draw or lack of draw to the fact that there's no Chuck Davis. Chuck Davis said that the one problem he had in bringing people here, because they, he organized in states where he flies people into the community and he needs to be both home you know, people who might have an interest in developing the business here. The problem is that he does in the fall and say days so that he fly from Winnipeg uh, out to the community and fly back. Meaning because those people aren't going to take three days out of the right now to be right here, be here, and be right back. That's never going to happen. And so the lot of airport is a big deal for that, but it's big deal for a lot of other reasons economically right now. And lastly, the investment traction of the community profile is in fact more like advertising, getting people up, getting to know where people are, talking to people about reasons they might want to invest. Uh, Tom, uh, Tom, uh, Tom Foley has already been paid for one, one, one year. One year. Yeah, so there'll be another payment, which is, I don't remember what the total is, $2,700 or something like that for all of these policies. You get to do four months policies, it's actually you get a discounted rate. So that's part of it, but it's also other things that are involved in But those numbers are fluid in the sense that if you need more money, you're going to get salary, you need more money in tax division, you need more money in reserve action. They can move between them. It's just those are only the numbers because those are the four areas that the board set as priorities. Um, you, you mentioned something about the. Um, EDO recruitment? Yeah, yeah, the EDO recruitment. You, had, you hired somebody? We only we we contracted with somebody on the basis that. Um, uh, if all four municipalities are in, we're going to go ahead. Um, if they're not, we uh, are going to review what we're doing. It's, it's not a firm contract because unless we have everyone say, yes, go ahead and do this, we're not doing that. And, and the real issue is, do will we have the money over a two-year period to attract somebody to say, okay, you have to deliver, because if you don't deliver, there, every single council can start it with going, what the heck have we gotten for what we accomplished after the medical piece some years ago, which was perhaps with the municipal control? What's happened in those intervening three or four years that brought anything forward? And, and it was difficult to quantify. I'm not saying there wasn't anything going on, I'm saying it was difficult to quantify. We've changed the process, there's going to be measurable specific specifically so it could be expected. And the treaty reports are going to say, these are the things we've done, not we've done for a conference, but here's what we've done. Here's the people who contact you, here's the people who express interest. Here's how we can enhance the image of the Swarthy Valley and the life of some people who like to be invested. And the reason for a recruitment firm is quite candidly, uh, it may be that we can find somebody locally, and quite candidly, somebody who brought in, somebody who knows somebody who's an aircraft uh, developer. And I'm going to go home to the officer who's in town. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure the board of RISE is not going to necessarily spend the $23,000. But our expectation was that there isn't. The people who have the skill set to do that are probably already employed at, you know, at least at the same time. Now, there, there are people who might think of. So if we can think of somebody before we enter into that contract, I have no. I don't think anybody on the board is, is committed to spending twenty two thousand dollars to find somebody who can do other work. But the key is getting somebody who actually knows how to get done development and actually deliver results. Because if we can't deliver results, we might as well pack it up. No, and I agree and, and, and I appreciate the work that you guys have done to formalize this because I think that you know councils in the past have we had a bad taste in the mouth about you know, Gone and what we spent on and what the measurables are the kid mentioned. Um, last year they were over budget by a considerable amount of money, thirty thousand dollars, and this year we're looking at considerably more. Um, and because of what you're saying is a part, like we're only looking at a part uh, year of salary for an EDO, then we're gonna probably see a lot more of an increase than next year, I'm assuming. Um, yeah. Well, not necessarily because there's yes and no because we have the the recruitment in for twenty three thousand. So that would switch over to the salary. That would switch over to the salary yeah. the following year. So you wouldn't see an an in, an increase in budget. Yeah, it would point. be moved moved around. So you still have the uh, reserve fund around 
by two thousand dollars after I'm, this thirty goes out of it? I, I'm not sure whether it's now sixty. I, I just don't remember that. We don't. I don't have a balance sheet ready for me. I can't remember. We have a we have a significant safety net so that we have an ability to wind down. Okay. Um, I, I would say, um, just in terms of um, deficit or budgeting, uh, you will see that there were a number of expenditures here, and, and you will see that the project expenditures um, were forty-nine thousand dollars. But as I told you, a lack of that fifteen thousand or so came from um, government to pay for those signs, and there were some other projects that they paid for. Um, so uh, it was sort of under budgeted from the beginning by that board. I, mean, I don't want to be critical of That's the prior fine. people who attended, but, um, but that was the reality of what occurred. And there were a time you would see of conferences. Um, we have eliminated many of those. Um, and in fact, we refused to send people this year. So, All right, thank you. So any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, it's good. Oops. Resolved that the 2019 Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a strong economy levy in the amount of $50,970 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor. Well, uh, I would move, I just want to add one amendment to, uh, to this, <coughs> this resolution. Yeah. Um, it's only, it, it, uh, our proposal was that, it, that the project, that the um, assessment be subject to approval by all four partners. Yeah, that was understood, I think, by our board that if it wasn't approved, Catcher Council Glory the question that would come back and we would consider where we go, whether we, it, it may be more effective, for instance, for the town to simply go on its own and say, okay, if the partnership is broken, the partnership is broken. Because two of the two smallest partners are, are already basically in as far as I know. Um, so, okay. Be rich. okay. But that was the intention from the beginning. Okay, so resolved that the 2019 Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy levy in the amount of $50,970 be approved for payment subject to a unanimous approval from all partnerships. I don't know if we want it to be unanimous. Like if the ball passes four or three at their table. No, no, no. It's what we mean. What, what that means is all four partners are in. Are in. Are in. You know, that's, uh, in yeah, yeah. I, I, I realized that was the intent of it. Oh, it puts the word. The guy mean. reading in the newspaper might may, may, may think. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, approval by all four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll also. <clears throat> add, sorry. Go ahead. Um, if we could. Part of it too was to ensure that we have a two-year commitment, not necessarily to the exact to, to funding commitment, but to a, a, a commitment that we believe in economic development for the future year. You want to add that in the resolution, someone? Yes, please. Or are all the other new scholars doing the same thing? That was the intention of. I, I don't know what the other. I don't. I don't know what the other municipalities have done. What do we have in the resolution? Not the intention, the intention is that. You have to have a well. It gives you stability. Well, it's more than stability. We we expect to have a legitimate analysis and a legitimate legitimate challenge as to whether or not it's been effective. Sometime near the end of during the 2020 budgeting process for the 2021 fiscal year, not in 2021 for the 2021 fiscal year. And so we would expect to be able to report these are the advances that have occurred. And either they meet the criterion or they don't. But if we just do this year, and then in 2020, we're going to have a difficult time recruiting. Again, what would be the point of spending $20,000 on a recruitment person if we're going to not have a person here in six months? Because we're not going to, we're not going to recruit. No one's coming here to say, yeah, let's go to the Swan River and see if we can 
uh, hope that everybody funds it for next year. <coughs> That's the point. The, the point is, we do, uh, the plan calls for that structure. Otherwise, we're really not going to do it. Thank you. Uh, all right, let's try this again. Resolve that the 2019 Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy levy in the amount of $50,970 be approved for payment subject, subject to approval from all partnerships. Further be it resolved that the Town of Swan River in principle supports the pro proposed RISE initiative through 2020 inclusive. Approved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Gray. Further discussion? Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the Northwest Regional Library 2019 budget be accepted as received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? I guess just to speak on it, it's a 2% increase overall in the budget. Um, is it enough? Is it enough? I mean, not that I'm looking to spend more money, just, uh, uh, for instance, it, it sort of, um, not that I don't think our employees deserve wages or, or rises or whatever, but it seems to be inconceivable that we would give our own employees core for them and give them... The, the same wages, they, get, they got the exact same that ours going to have. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Carry. Result of the 2019 Northwest Regional Library levy in the amount of $86,903.10 be approved for payment once the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2018 have been received. Moved by Councillor Freeze. No, okay. Moved by Councillor Delore, a second by Councillor Freeze and discussion. All in favor? Go ahead, Councillor well, Freeze. Read it to me again. Sorry. The whole thing. The part about the audited. Uh, the levy in the amount of $86,903.10 be approved for payment once the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2018 have been received. This is uh, we received them. Oh, okay. We received them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. there it is. I got it. All in favor? It's yeah. carried. <laughs> I thought we'd done that, that's why I was confused. Result of the offer to purchase lots 429 and 431 Valley View Drive from Dennis Adamchuk and Carla Vopney. As for conditions, listed and attached Schedule A be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Montoni. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, looking at their request for tax incentives, um, we, they were they're asking for a tax incentive on when they first build the, the garage, and then they're looking for a tax incentive again when they build the house in future years. I uh, are they aware that a garage does not qualify for a tax incentive? They are. They're on two separate properties, so because because I'm looking at the tax incentive thing, and it's it's either commercial or industrial development new multi-unit residential development or new residential housing. And I, I think it would be hard pressed to have garages of residential housing. I don't know. Councillor Gray. Didn't we say we were going to discontinue that program? Well, yeah, I mean, Terry, uh, we were notes said July 1st, 2019, we're going to tell people that it's no longer available. We, we should probably pass a resolution yes. before anything. Yeah. Uh, Councillor White. Yeah, I'm a little concerned that we're going to, I see a is going to say as July 1, we're going to have something no longer available, which is with, with which this council, I don't believe, has voted on. That's uh, why it was just discussed in budget. Oh, like that okay. Was. Secondly, I think a, a, a very respectful of you, Mr. Morgan, you know that. But I see that a grass is part of a residential house. That's why you built a grass, it's part of your house. Yeah, but it's two separate buildings. But it's he bought two lots, so, eh? so he's building a new house. Not hmm? building a second house. I understand that, but it's part of that house. But he's got it on two lots. He's paying twice as taxes already because he has two lots. But I'm looking at currently how the bylaw is currently worded, which is what we have to go on, and it doesn't give that ability to give a tax incentive to a garage, the way I see it. So 
Is this garage, does he have two garages? I read it, but I forgot. Yes, yeah. he's asking to build a garage on immediately, and then in future years, down the road, doesn't give a time frame. Um, but we are also going to tax the garage. Okay. So that's Counsel, Councillor DeVore. What's the assessed value of these properties? Mm, 100. The two of them are being purchased for $5,100. <coughs> that's correct. Well, it's looking, uh, it, it still tells me that the financial incentive plan is important. Here's a guy building a house, and he's acquired, he's followed away incentive plan. It's encouraged guy who's buying a house, building a house rather, to apply for it. And I think it uh, encourages people to build. I, th I think that uh, Councillor Morio has stated that our bylaw, which is what we have to follow. Well, I have no problem with that. Just, uh, I can yeah, I, I, I got no problem with applying, if it's still in existence, applying for, for the house. But as currently how the bylaw states, yep. a garage is not eligible for a tax incentive. Well, we should have a, uh, the intention is for it to withdraw, right? Yes. And then, you know, it will have a proof on that, obviously, but it, it was disguised as part of our budget and we all approved, or are going to approve. So, I would, sorry, I would have to look at the assessed values. It's too material. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, the only thing I would say, because it currently does exist, right? The only thing I would say is within a reasonable timeline is not actually an, an adequate thing. And so if they build by and they can pick a date, April 1st, 2020, then they get, if they don't build by April 1st, 2020, they don't. That was in there. Um, no, it doesn't. In, in the contract, usually the, in the land document, you have two years from the date of purchase to have it up to lockup stage. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah I believe that's yeah. what it was. Okay, well then that's fine. Then as long as it, it, it what their office says within a reasonable period of time, that's not the plan. The plan is it has to be uh, right to the bottom. What, what, what's the closing date? Yeah, it says incentives will be awarded on a maximum of two years. Both years of the assessments will be on one structure class and based on the original full assessment. And then um, I just read it. And then it says the building has to be up to up to lockup stage, and it defines where lock, what lockup stage is. Same thing. So the first half of the of the sale? When we approve it, I think, right? The closing, no. yeah. The closing date of the sale? Uh, I don't know if they don't have a... It's gotta be in the offer purchase. We don't have the actual offer purchase. That's what I'm asking. It's two years from whatever the closing date is. Assuming the closing date is a reasonable period of time, like June 1st, yeah. then it's two years from then. Closing days probably when it's all signed. And then. Well, it's when they get title. They yeah, get but that one, right? So it should be. Councilor Dwayne. Normally, we only put conditions as far as timelines to build on, on when we gave like special deals on those lots over there for a thousand bucks. If you just bought a lot, we, we usually didn't attach conditions. No, we only attach conditions on the on the sale of the lots on thirteenth, twelfth. On the municipal development lots, if you if you bought like. If you bought the lot for full assessed value, there was no condition. But if you bought it for the two thousand dollars from the municipal developers, that's when the conditions came on. Let's well, see, this is a separate issue completely. Yeah. This is that for the financial plan only in my mind. Because the incentive is different from yeah the development. The incentive is just for the for the building itself. Well, the incentive bylaws is within two years from the date of closing. That's as long as we know what the date of closing is not, as long as it's not like date of closing is the fall, then it, it's a goal for the one, it's not a goal for the other, isn't it? That's right. Okay, so what do you want? <clears throat> you want to make amendments or do you want to? Well, no, I'm, okay. I'm afraid to approve it according to the bylaw, which is the garage doesn't fall by the house and garage does as long as it's within two years from the day of closing. So we just we can just put the uh, put as with the conditions as per bylaw. Have those on that. We don't have to go into each specific one. Exactly. That's right. Because if you build a, if you build two houses, then he gets the incentives. Right? Mm -hmm. 
maybe builds one, I mean, until we withdraw it, maybe he qualifies. So he can build another house five years from now, too, and get to the center. I don't know. It builds it below you hope. Well, it's from <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> yeah. That'll be the easy to say You're just adding that in there right now. Take a look, yep, refresh. It says the incentive is non transferable and non assignable. The incentive will apply only to the purchasers of the property or the property owner slash developer at the time of the building enters the tax rolls. So did you want to say that the incentive plan is is approved for the house lot, not the garage? No, no. It's, a, it's approved for both lots okay. pursuant to the bylaw, which requires the construction of a house or in this case, it has to be a house because it's residential property. Whatever they build may not be eligible according to the bylaw. Or exactly, it's got to be eligible according to the bylaw. Mm -hmm. and it's got to be built two year, within two years of the closing date. That's so it. I'll read the, the amended resolution again. Resolve, they've uh, offered to purchase lots 429 and 431 Valley View Drive from Dennis Adamchuk and Carla Vaughn. as for conditions as per the town of Swan River approved incentive plan bylaw. Okay. Uh, and that was moved by, who do we have? I'll move that. Okay, moved by Councillor Grace, and by Councillor DeLaurier. All in favor? So Molly, make sure you talk to them about that, eh, Derek? Yeah, they also Please. know uh, they're aware that there is no road there, and there is a uh, local improvement that will happen to get a road base asphalt curve there. Resolved that the 2019 Swan Valley District Recreation Commission budget be accepted as received. Moved by Councillor Mori, or sorry, when Tony, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Morio. I might need a little bit of an education here. Now that the, the province is now giving the funding for recreations directly to the municipalities, what does this serve? Am I missing? I might be missing something. Like, what we have to now for the, the, that money is back to the district record commission, or how does that work? You're well, No, what it used to happen was that the monies came to the municipalities. No, so to the commission. The commission they then uh, had to give them to the municipalities, but they effectively gave them back. For, it was a, a circuit, it was a bizarre it was circuit. It was in and out of the And so this is just to go back to the same amount of money we've got that now directly, instead of it going to commission to us, to them, it now goes to us, to them, right? Same budget as far as I know. <coughs> I, 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 I'm a little concerned because I, I was worried, I was supposed to go Tony and, and uh, Gloria will remind me, but I was a little worried because I think the original Budget amount was significantly higher. We um, had a programmer and a bunch of other stuff that was put into it, but we well, that's put in every year. Well, yeah, but but <laughs> but that was your, so I was a little concerned until I actually looked at the the other thing is that on uh, May twenty third, there's going to be a further planning meeting to talk about whether or not the record the district recreation committee has any purpose, but also the recreation across the valley. That's why I encourage you to come. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Scary. Okay, that rising from that general discussion, I, 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 it's possible when Tony is not able to attend, and we need someone to attend, so I'm going to ask that Councillor White uh, take his place as a member of the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission. What okay. day? The same day we were doing a budget at 7.30. That's apparently they're going to be in town anyway. Yes. Seven thirty. Yes. Well, what's one more? So I'm moving that. I can pay this big salary. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, are you still whining on that hole? You started. Okay. I think that's fine. Thank you. Resolved that the 2019 Swan Valley District Recreation Commission levy in the amount of twenty-two thousand one hundred seventy-six dollars be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? It's Gary. Resolve that the town of Swan River continue to sponsor 
the coal crew, or sorry, the work crew program from July 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2020. Moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, Councillor Morial. Can you just pass on to, I can't remember the name of the guy that looks after that, but this is Warren. Warren, this is a very good write up as to what his plan is and stuff like that, as compared to previous years where. Yes. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinary and Services District, District 2017 and 2018 unaudited financial statements be received. Moved by Councillor Lintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Pass these off here at last uh, council meeting. Apparently, they don't have to have audited financial statements anymore. Further discussion? All in favor? Carried. <clears throat> Whereas the province of Manitoba, in the process of renewing the old fleet net public safety communication system, and whereas the change over requires a complete replacement of all fire department communication equipment, which is extremely expensive and will cost municipalities a significant amounts of funds to maintain required communications, therefore be it resolved that the AMM lobby the provincial government for a one-time funding assistance program to purchase the required communications equipment. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Antoni. Discussion, Councillor Morio. Um, just bringing this motion forward as I alluded to a little bit earlier. Um, I would like this motion to be, um, we could, if it passes tonight, it can go to the AMM to the June district meeting where it can be brought on to the uh, provincial AMM meeting where uh, it can be voted on there as a province it'll become one of the mandates for, uh, for AMM to lobby the province. Um, I think it might be, it'll be a, um, definitely a resolution that I can see significantly passing at AMM because uh, every municipality is in the same boat we are. Um, the communication equipment is not cheap. Um, mm -hmm. We're on the fire departments. Mm -hmm. um, one portable radio was in excess of $6,000 a piece. So this is a lot of cheap overhaul. Um, so that's uh, okay. definitely something that we Further discussion? Sorry. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> do you have a resolution to replace it? <coughs> you I don't think so. Okay, fine. I don't care. It's just temporary. You don't want to keep them for a long period of time, so. <clears throat> Result of the town of Swatter or purchase a freight liner chassis with uh, with the Cobra compactor from Westpac in the <coughs> community for two hundred and sixty thousand four hundred and sixty one and twenty five cents, including taxes. Moved by Councillor <coughs> Nobody? Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion. Since this was set back, um, fresh memory, is there any change on the order of the scoring? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so now uh, the West back due to the we put a value of four thousand dollars to the town, uh, just based on the five thousand guaranteed from the other <coughs> vendors. Uh, we didn't put it in the uh, in tabulation, but we will require the resolution to. To have the full, the full two hundred sixty thousand amount. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor. It's carried. <clears throat> Be resolved that the accounts as follows are hereby approved for payment. General checks number twenty four triple three to number two four four one eight. For a total of four hundred forty-seven thousand four hundred eighty-three and thirty-five cents. <coughs> Payroll checks number forty-four forty-nine to forty-four fifty-six for a total of one hundred five thousand eight hundred ninety-two and eight cents. And payroll account checks number forty-four fifty-seven to forty-four sixty-four for a total of one hundred thirty-five thousand two hundred four and ninety-two cents. Moved by Councillor 
with Tony seconded by Councillor Oreo. Discussion? All in favor? Sorry, go ahead, Councillor Oreo. Where did that go? The Honda generator that was. So we had an, uh, I think we had an incident where we had some theft. Yeah, the first incident was a half ton. The second was a generator. So since we've we've moved to taking all, so we so we had pieces off the service truck into. The, so it was two separate incidents then. Within five days. Yeah. yeah. Where did this occur? Public works. Yeah. The plan one of the fences. Yeah. Well, wow. uh, one one they removed the coupler on the gate, which we fixed. The other they planned to remove fences. For the discussion, Councillor Wintoni. The surveying to sub, uh, subdivision Fifth Avenue and Sixth Avenue West. Can you just tell me more about that one? Um, that is the Balkan and Kilchiki cost for the approval of our subdivision for Fifth Avenue West. It, it started, the process started over two and a half years ago. We're just, uh, we've just received the mylars from the line titles. That is the point which we get an invoice from. That's why it's over the series. <clears throat> so there's there potential for housing to be developed there, or what? Oh, so we've already... Have we sold some lots there? Or Did you have interest on the Yeah, we have, an, uh, we have a purchase agreement with a local developer for five lots already on the unapproved subdivision. Okay, further discussion? Oh, yeah, I have a question. Centurion, what was that for? That's uh, Ronald Lickies. Oh, of course. I have ask that every time. Um, and the hall, 55597, was that on budget? That was last year's budget. Most of the work was done in January of 19. Uh, Unfortunately, yeah, dude, I, I don't know what the, the delays were. I know there was problems getting contractors. I guess a report should be done in council, but uh, that was an 18 budget. But, uh, but it won't be an 18 expenditures. Terry did not put it in 18 expenditures. No. We, so we budgeted I, for this year? Uh, I think 16,000 of it. But, it's but, budgeted for 19. But isn't the problem that we've got 56,000 worth of expenses? Like we're gonna have a we're gonna have a um, a forty thousand dollar shortfall. Yeah, I got I I've, I've got to get back to council on on that. I know that that it will not affect the 19 budget. So places grant about 33,000 in addition to the 16 we put in. So that's for 49. Yeah, there's. I, I just don't know the details of this project. Then I have to okay. go back to council. Okay. That was one of my questions. Uh, what was the Swan Valley Pro Society check for? Oh, that was a uh, jurisdictional issue. So that's <coughs> a refund. The uh, basically we gave them a building permit on something that the OFC should have done. So we did charge them, but we're refunding you. Okay. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Have we made arrangements for them for 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 the cost of, of uh, replacing the arena? Arena? The, the arena is out of service. And last week oh. we said we were going to cover the cost yes, yeah. of making sure there was an alternate facility because that's fundamentally unfair. I believe the conversations have happened. I'm not sure what their stance was on that. Okay. Something else. Lions is just the regular payment. Is that on the explanations? How much is it? Eighteen thousand. Sixteen thousand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a journey. Yeah, maybe that's not every time. Those are the other things. Okay. Okay. All in favor? <clears throat> it's carried. 
Resolved that the financial statements for the 12 months ended December 31st, 2018, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Antoni. Discussion? Councillor Gray. No, no, I'm just waiting. Oh, okay. Uh, all in favor? Councillor Gray, reason to do a question? Chairman, you're, you're, you're going to, okay? All in favor? Sorry. Okay, let's carry it. Okay. There's all that the bylaw 2, 2019, Special Service Solid Waste Collection bylaw be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the bylaw 4, 2019, tax certificate fee bylaw be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Wentoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. Opposed? I mean, the same reasons as before. It doesn't cost us that much. I mean, it works the same way. It should, we should bill for what we charge, what would it cost us to do something. We shouldn't overcharge, we shouldn't undercharge. It's not a profit center. Go ahead. I guess just, I wanted to put that in my report too, just to, to discuss on a fee schedule discussion from the last meeting. Uh, like we, don't want, we don't have the administration to, to, to track every cost that we have. Like I'm sure you understand. Yeah, but, uh, like we want to recoup our costs, but uh, and we, we, we just don't have the ability to, to track absolutely everything, so it is a we want to recoup our costs, but it won't be to. I don't know what the I know, I know, I know, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I know what I, what, I, I know what a tax certificate does, yeah. and I know how long it's likely to take. It's likely to take about five minutes for a person to get paid about $23 an hour. So I'm pretty sure it doesn't cost $30 to be done. But I, I, I'm voting against it because I don't agree with it in principle. And, and, and I know that there will not be a perfect answer for everything, that, that there will be things that we can't have to estimate. And, but we should try and estimate close, not far apart. Anyway, I, I vote against it, it's, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. I don't really care. Not for the period. Tax levy by law and the draft financial plan, we can't do it till Thursday, right? Thursday. Yeah, we can't do um, 11.3. Just table it then? Okay, I'll read it then. Resolve that bylaw 5, 2019, tax levy by law be read a first time. I guess we have to have it moved. Councilor Lentoni? Do we have to? Okay, we can do it till Thursday. Yeah. Can, can we just, is that you can do, do we have to move it table. first? Yeah, we we'll have to make, put the motion on the table okay. and then make a motion on the table. Moved by Councilman Tony, second by Councilor Delorier. Make a motion on the table. It's a shape, it's not good. Okay. And we'll also have a draft of the indemnity bylaw. Yeah, Thursday. Okay. Okay. All right. Resolved that the pursuant sections 1523 of the Municipal Act, Council Go to Committee, and close the meeting to the public to discuss uh, some legal matters and also the uh, CAO candidate as well. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? Let's carry.